Hi, I'm Barry Ostrowski. At Barnabas Health, we believe citizens need to be informed about the important health care issues affecting their lives. That's why we're proud to support health care programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners on public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, Bloomfield College, offering small classes and big opportunities since 1868, Barnabas Health, Wells Fargo, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and banking under the principle of stewardship, and by PSE&G committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. This is One on One. That's good acting, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a poor boy, a man. I get that a lot. I go to Atlantic City all the time, like, are you the guy? I go, no, I'm not. This is one you can't afford to miss. They thought that I wouldn't survive it, but I knew I would. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato coming to you from the TISH WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Uh, it is an honor to be here and it's also an honor to have Joanna Gagas, who is our executive producer of programming and also the host of Life and Living with Joanna Gagas on public television. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's fun to be here with you like so, this. It is great to be here at Lincoln Center. Uh, folks, this is a half hour program dedicated to a terrific initiative. It is the Montclair Film Festival. It is a film festival started by our good friend and colleague, Bob Feinberg at WNET. Um, listen, when Feinberg came to us and said, uh, along with John Servideo, and they said, we're going to do the Montclair Film Festival about two years ago, we said, uh, really? Uh, a film festival in the town, our hometown of Montclair? How could you actually pull that together? Is the town big enough? And, and how could it uh, be pulled off? And let's go, let's describe it, because this entire half hour, you're going to see clips from the film festival opening night at Montclair State University, which was awesome. Let's go through this. Nearly 50 films. That's right, nearly 50 films. And as a matter of fact, the, uh, the goal had been to have 25 films, which was a big goal for the first time around. And the fact that they had 50 films, they doubled what they had originally set out to do. It was huge. Yeah, and the reason Joanna is with us is because Joanna was out there with a the film crew and uh, video crew shooting. I was shooting uh, as well. Joanna got some great footage, great interviews. And by the way, this is the, the program for that night. It was for that week. It was May 1st to May 6, 2012, celebrating community, culture, and cinema, the Montclair Film Festival. And by the way, even though it was May 1st through the 6th, that's just the beginning of the film festival. It is year-round. You're going to see the website throughout the uh, program. You'll see the Montclair Film Festival website throughout the program. And so you can log on anytime to find out what's going on. First thing we're going to do is go to opening night. They sold, by the way, nearly 8,000 tickets for the film festival. But opening night was huge. Castor Theater, they opened up with uh, the film The Oranges. That's right. Which was uh, terrific. It was an, uh, a movie about, let's just say, two neighbors in suburban New Jersey, uh, two close families, and... Uh, they're best friends, and Oliver Platt, who you're going to see an interview with in a second. I did a great interview with him. He was great. I was okay. Um, and uh, his Hugh, best... Hugh Laurie plays his best friend. And he gets involved with... Leighton Meester. Some things go wrong. There's a daughter involved. There's an affair. It gets crazy. But Leighton Meester is the daughter of... Of Hugh Laurie. Okay, so for... No, 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 no. You, Excuse Laurie... No, no, me, Oliver forgot, Platt, that would be right. something else, and we don't do that on public television. <laughs> the, the best friend of you, Lori, right, is Oliver Platt. The bottom line is he gets involved with Oliver Platt's daughter. And Hugh Laurie, we should tell people from House, in case people are, don't On know Fox. that name off the top okay. of their head. But, uh, yeah, it gets a little bit weird when you see the, the two families getting together for dinner, and when they go to serve dessert, it's Hugh Laurie and Leighton Meester in the kitchen, and it's just... And Allison Janney's in this as well. It is a wild movie, and it's part of the uh, Montclair Film Festival. It was the opening night movie at Casser Theater, at Montclair State Univers University. This is an interview we did with one of the stars, Oliver Platt. We're here with Oliver Platt, who is the star, one of the stars of tonight. One of the stars. It's a big deal, no? It's the first night of the Montclair International Film Festival. First one ever. It's a big night. You got the jitters, don't you? <laughs> I'm, I'm actually okay. What do you think? But this is Montclair. This is a big deal for the town. Thank you, by the way, for, oh, for coming my, here tonight. My pleasure. Are you kidding me? I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Let me ask you, when you first heard that it would be premiering tonight at the Montclair Film Festival, uh, while it's a big deal for us, in all seriousness, what do you think a festival like this does for our town, does for our community? 
I think any community that's interested in celebrating film is, uh, you know, one that I'm going to get behind. I mean, film is uh, arguably the dominant story storytelling medium of our of our time, right? And it's a wonderful way for you know, I think especially you know, young people to learn how to re express themselves and be interested in the, you know, the various aspects of the medium and, you know, it's uh, it's 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 all good. It's real good, and I want to thank you for taking the time and talking to us, and, and congratulations with the film. It's the perfect film to start off the festival. It's, it's, it's the oranges. Yeah. We're not too far from the oranges either. That's right. Thank you, Oliver. You bet. My pleasure. Oliver Platt was absolutely great. He was fantastic, and you know, such a warm man. When we spoke to him afterwards, you had a chance to talk to him, and I saw him interacting with people in the community. And I mean, how great is that? You're a Montclair resident, and here Oliver Platt walks into the Castor Theater at Montclair State University and has a conversation with you. But, but he was fantastic and hysterical in the film. I, I think he may not have said more than 10 words in the film altogether, but he, he stole was it. great. <laughs> he was great. He's he really a great did. performer. And, and that's obviously what Bob Feinberg and the folks at the film festival had in mind, was bringing stars like uh, Oliver Platt and others uh, to town to do great work like this. By the way, uh, two of the big supporters, uh, uh, Stephen Colbert, you may have heard of him on Comedy Central, and Evie Colbert, who's one of the uh, tremendous volunteers who work behind the scenes and the organizers and leaders of this film festival. You got a chance to talk to. Uh I Steve spoke to both Evie. of them. I did. And, you know, Evie had such a huge part in, in getting this together. She was Bob Feinberg, who we'll talk about in a minute. But um, Evie really was part of this from the ground level. And then to see Stephen there, and he did a lot of promotion leading up to the event. He, he drove people to the website. He inter he. Uh, Got people, you know, he talked about it on his show. I thought you were going to say he drove people to the theater. <laughs> well, he did drive. <laughs> Could you imagine Stephen Colbert yeah, is picking be, me up? Yeah, seven. exactly. Uh, but, you know, having a chance to see them there, and, and they're such huge icons in Montclair. Yep. Um, so, yeah, Ready I had to a chance to talk to them. Let's go to it. Let's go to Stephen and Evie Colbert. I'm here with Stephen and Evie Colbert, who have both played a crucial role in getting this Montclair Film Festival off the ground. Stephen, I'll start with you. Why is this important, not to Montclair, not just to New Jersey, but to everyone in this area? Oh, well, gosh. I mean, any time you can add to the cultural life of a community, and whether that's Montclair or northern New Jersey or the entire state, um, it's not only good for the spirit of the community to bring people together from all walks of life in the community, from any part of this town people are excited, but also it's good for the economy of the community and it's a great opportunity for the children. You know, I, when I grew up, in, we both grew up in a town that had an arts festival and you know, we were inspired by the artists we met as children and sort of inspired us to do what we do now and we hope that this, if, if as you know, it's not really the intention of a festival, but it's certainly one of the great unintended uh, aspects of an arts festival like this is that it inspires the children to broaden their horizons and what they might want to do with their lives. And it's almost like going to the movies and connecting with cinema is, is lost nowadays with people staying home to watch movies. And Evie, I want to ask you, you know, a lot of work went into this festival. You've been at the helm of all of it. Um, how excited are you to see this opening night such a success? So excited. We're all so excited. I think it has been um, I, I guess more successful than we thought it would be, just because the spirit is amazing. Everybody's happy, everybody's glad to be here. The support is tremendous. Yeah, it's really incredible. It's really great. You know, it's sort of like, you know, they build it, they, uh, if you build it, they will come. You know, this is two and a half years Not coming. Quite, maybe. Something since, like that. Since Bob Feinberg and I had lunch. Had lunch the first time. <laughs> it's been a but long time. For the last six months, you can feel the, 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 the excitement and snowballing behind this. And I'm already excited for next year. Yeah, Colbert has it right. They're already excited about next year. You know, it's a lot of pressure to do it again. It is, and I think I saw Evie break out in a sweat when he <laughs> said that. <laughs> but they were such great supporters. And by the way, this is Steve Adubato with my colleague on air, Joanna Gagas, uh, coming to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. You could see what's going on behind us. But on the Jersey side of the river, there's culture and the arts as well, the Montclair Film Festival. That's what we are celebrating for this entire half hour. You're seeing a lot of clips from opening night, a lot of the movies that were there. Look at the website from the film festival throughout this program to find out what's going on year-round. About to go to a clip. We talked about Feinberg, Bob Feinberg, who was the, uh, the co-creator. He got this thing started, the chairman of the event. And also Tom and Raffaella. Talk about them real clip. Raphael Nehausen and Tom Powers are the co-directors of the film festival. They were brought in. They're actually not Montclair residents. They're not even from New Jersey. But, but they're let professionals me tell you, in the field. They're professionals in the field, and they know what they're doing. And, and they were able to not only get to know and understand New Jersey and what New Jersey is all about, but Montclair. 
and, and what the residents were looking for. And I think they really found films. I mean, they handpicked every film that was in this festival, every film that was featured. And the feedback that I got from the residents as to the, the films that they felt they really connected with just goes to show what a great job Raffaella and Tom really did. And, and blood, sweat, and tears went into this from them. And, I'm sure that they were more than thrilled. And the Film Festival Board did a great job picking them to run the festival. Let's go to the organizers who made this great film festival happen. It is opening night, May 1st, 2012. Bob Feinberg, he's the guy. He's not going to say he's the guy. He's going to say it was our team, and it's all true. There are so many people behind the scenes. But i got to tell you, Bob, I remember I was just talking to John Savidio. I remember we sat down at Egan's Pub having a conversation about this idea you guys had. Is this really it? Or bigger? I, you know, I think, I think in my heart of hearts, I was dreaming that it would look something like this. And the fact that it's become a reality is, is really incredible. I mean, the town is lit up, literally lit up with signage and, uh, and window painting. And uh, everybody's getting involved. Stuff's going on that, frankly, I had nothing to do with. We had 45 films, great films, lots of bold-faced names coming. I, it's really... Uh, it's really more than I honestly expected would happen in the first year. What does it say? Talk, talk about so Tom and Raffaella. Next, we have, we have a clip of Tom and Raffaella, who, uh, like I said, you know, they, they had a chance to come out and, and talk to us opening night, even though I'm sure that they were overwhelmed by all the things that they still had going on coming up in the week, but such, so energetic. And, and we're going to go to that clip and just see why they made this so great. Let's go to that clip. So this is it. Tom, Raphael, this is it. We're doing this on May 1st. We're here at Montclair State, Casser Theater. This is the night everyone's been waiting for. How exciting. Well, we're very excited because we've been doing this for a few months now, uh, building up to tonight and this week. We've got uh, close to 50 films, 50 guests coming, and it's going to be an amazing week. Why do you look tired to me? <laughs> oh, well, maybe because we haven't slept in exactly. much of the last few weeks, but it's all worth it, and we can't wait for the festival to kick off and get started today. After all this, you know, I mean, Bob and, and everyone else that started this, you know, oh, well over a year ago, and they brought two of the best in the business, the two of you to come on board to do this, beyond your expectations? Uh, so, you know, we started out thinking that we we're going to do a film a festival of about 25 films in a few days. It's grown into, as I said, you know, close to 50 films. So we've almost doubled the original mandate of the festival. What makes Montclair so special? Because you have done this in other places, Raphael. I mean, it's the people. It's really the people. And I feel more blown away by the people of the community than even the films we're showing. We've been inspired every single day by the support of the community and all the amazing people on the board, the volunteers, everyone who makes the festival happen. Montclair is a film town. Montclair is a film town. Montclair, it, people in Montclair know that it's a film town. Now the rest of the world is going to know that Montclair is a film town. Montclair is a film town, and Tom and Raphael did a great job. Hey, again, um, as we said, opening night and throughout the film festival, there were superstars. And by the way, the superstars of the uh, film festival were the people who made the films, the stars of the films, whether you know their names or not. But we had some big names as well. One of them, who I was so excited about, Kathleen Turner, who came to town. Uh, Jennifer Hopek, one of our uh, producers, told us that she has a film out now called The Perfect Family. Uh, go on DVD online, not DVD, uh, on, go demand. on demand and find it. On it's, demand. it's a terrific movie, I hear. You got to interview her. Talk about that while we set it up. I did. You know, Kathleen, she's amazing. First of all. Look, you call her Kathleen right I, out of the box. She's Kathleen. What are you, going out to dinner this weekend? Hopefully. <laughs> How great was she? She was fantastic. Let me tell you, she has a comedic timing that you, you just can't understand until you're, you're with her. But she is promoting The Perfect Family, the movie that just came out. People can find it on demand. But she sat down and, and she did 45 minutes of Q&A with people from Montclair and people from all over who came to see her. And let me tell you, people came from all over to see her, um, from all over New Jersey. And, and people came from Manhattan, New York. And she's just so warm and she connects and she's personal. And let me tell you, she got to the nitty gritty of her life. Mm. And, and it was fun. She had the audience roaring. She had me roaring. It was great. Uh, Joanna Gagas with a very good friend, Kathleen Turner. I'm here with Kathleen Turner, one of Hollywood's greatest actors, truest talents, who's here to present a, a tribute tonight. Tell us about what's happening tonight. Uh, I think that what they've done is put together a series of uh, clips from my extended career. I can say that now that it's about 35 years, I guess. 
Um, and I hope to talk with and get to know some of the audience and discuss also my, my current film. Tell us about your current film, The Perfect Family. It is called The Perfect Family. Of course, there is no such thing. But it is a sweet woman, a devout Catholic woman uh, who is trying to reconcile her, her life uh, through the Catholic Church with the different demands and difficulties of her family. And she is quite an interesting character, and I have to ask, do you in any way relate to her character, and, and does, do you have to relate to a character in order to play the role? I try and understand her as best I can. And so in that sense, yeah, there are always qualities in a, a woman that I, that I reach for, that I feel familiar to. But the circumstances, uh, no, no, that's, that's what you call acting. Did you find yourself lowering your voice talking? I to her? did. I found myself <laughs> dropping about eight octaves talking to her. <laughs> she's great. She's really great, and and you just you get that sense from her talking to her. She she's just fun and and she's real. Talking about great uh, Olympia Dukakis from Montclair originally, right? Talk about another Montclair icon. Yeah, she started the whole theater company way back in the 1980s when she won uh, the the Academy Award, right? For uh, Moonstruck. Moonstruck. That's fabulous. Right. She came back to Montclair State. She came back to the Montclair Film Festival. This is a great interview, right? It's a fantastic interview. We get to see why she still is championing the arts. Go ahead, throw to it. Go ahead. Let's go see the clip. Tonight is such an exciting night because we have right here at the Bellevue Theater in Montclair, Olympia Dukakis. <laughs> Olympia, it's such a pleasure to have you here with Thank us. You. You're here for your film Cloudburst. Right. Tell us about it. Well, it's uh, uh, kind of an extraordinary film. It's about two, a couple, two women, who've been together for many, many years, and uh, one gets very sick, and the house gets taken away, and they struggle to find their way through this, and during the course of the movie, they both alter and change, and it's very funny, and it's sweet, and basically it's a love story directed by Tom Fitzgerald with myself and Brenda Fricka, and what else can I tell you? Well, you can tell us how you channeled the spirit of this vivacious woman who, I would dare to say, you probably found some of the, the characteristics that you possess yourself in her? Well, she's pretty in your face, and I can do that. I, I can do that when pushed to the wall. I can be pretty much in your face as well. But, but it was really um, the director pushing me to keep taking more chances and, and keep pushing my tolerance for myself in, in that kind of a mode. And he was wonderful, Tom Fitzgerald. He's a Canadian director. And Independent film is something that we are celebrating all this week here at the Montclair Film Festival. Why is it special to you to be a part of something like this? Because um, God knows it's not the money, <laughs> it's a, but it's the um, opportunity to engage in, with material that feels that it's like about our lives and the lives of people around us. and and. Um, it feels like audiences um, can come in and have some kind of dialogue and some kind of um, response to this material. I mean, it's not that it's not entertaining, because it is this. I think this film is quite entertaining. But it also asks us to take a look at two lives that have been spent in a very specific way effort to survive, survive the culture, the communities that they're in. And these two women managed somehow to prevail. That was uh, an incredible, incredible uh, Olympia Dukakis. Uh, she was amazing that night, and there were so many superstars who were in the, uh, uh, at the Montclair Film Festival, at, at the Castor Theater at Montclair State. Listen, let, let's set this up, because there's another film that shifts gears. You talk about Olympia Dukakis, and there's somebody else from the 1980s and early 90s that people may have heard of, Morton Downey Jr. Morton Downey Jr., that's right. And Steve, you actually had a chance, did you not, to host a Q&A session with the director of that film, Evocateur? Was it yeah, a documentary? The, the film was Evocateur, and you may ask yourself, you know, who was Morton Downey Jr.? Jr.? Some people may know his name, some people may not, but the movie was Evocateur for those of us who were in broadcasting, and I was actually at WR Channel 9 as a commentator at the time where 
Morton Downey Jr. came out of the studio, was across the river back in Jersey and Sea Caucus, and the filmmakers were Seth Kramer and Daniel Miller. And at the uh, Wellmont Theater, which was one of the many theaters that participated in the Montclair Film Festival, they were just so uh, gracious to have us there. The, it was packed. People wanted to see it, wanted to see Eva Couture. You're going to see a clip from the movie on the life of um, uh, Morton Downey Jr. and then a quick interview with Seth Kramer and Daniel Miller from the Montclair Film Festival. Let's go to the clip. Someone like me could be a frightening person. Doing uh, stage three on board. board. Someone like you could be a frightening person. Most of us, of course, are just average, everyday human beings like my audience is. We hope that the politicians become frightened of us. Sit down, fatso! Why don't I stuff that flag down your throat? I don't dig Russians. Ow! Here's what we're doing tonight. We would figure out this is going to be your position on this topic. He would argue that position like nobody else. It was a great act. For you limousine liberals out there, here comes your worst nightmare, baby. Whether it's Morton Downey of his time or Rush Limbaugh. America is at a crossroads. I think Glenn Beck is the only one telling the truth. It's the same thing. Morton Downey is the folk hero of the United States. He captures the heartbeat of America. Why did you make this film <laughs> about this guy? Right, well, first of all, don't tell anyone at Channel 9 how much footage we stole. That's number one. <laughs> okay. That's quite all right. <laughs> um, Why I, Morton Downey Jr.? We, Seth and I, discovered that both of us were fans of the show uh, when we were teenagers. Uh, it was something that we sort of held repressed for a long time. Uh, because? Because... Get a little closer. OK. Did uh, you guys actually go? No, no, we, we didn't, didn't go. go. You we watched. Didn't we watched. We watched. Okay. Yeah, th those people who are in the movie are our friends, and they were they all had cars and were able to go. We didn't, and we, we sort of watch it. yeah, we watched it from home. But Good. we were uh, we were both fans at the time, and were you when you were watching as kids? Now, how old? I'm trying to get a sense. When you were watching in 88 and 89, how old were you? This is getting very personal. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> I, <laughs> no, that's right. We were, take, take, we were around take, take 17 and 18. Were. <laughs> how old were you? 17 or 18 And you're watching right. more No, we were the perfect Jr. audience for this guy. Were we you were like the target audience. Were you screaming at the television? Oh, God, that's a great question. I, I can't. No, nah, you know, I was pretty passive. I was more into, like, the guys he was yelling at, so I sort of rooted for them. <laughs> OK. Two great young filmmakers, part of the Montclair Film Festival. Steve Adubato here at the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center with my colleague on here, Joanna Gagas. Real quick, uh, you got to see on opening night Dave Matthews, which was a thrill for you. My wife was there that night, and she pushed me aside to get to him as well. I think she pushed me aside as well. Why, why was he there? You know, Dave actually, while we know him as a musician and a great, um, he actually helped produce the film and get the film out, The Oranges. Right. We talked about earlier in the show with Oliver Platt and Hugh Laurie. And so Dave was there helping to promote the film. Let's Love go it. to the clip. Yep. I'm here with Dave Matthews, who happens to be one of my personal all-time favorite artists. Dave. Oh, that's nice of you. What brings you here to the Montclair Film Festival? Well, uh, I have a, I'm part of a distribution company, ATO. Films, so uh, production distribution, so we are part of the team that's with the opening film, The Oranges. What does it do for you when you come to a place like this and you see the community reacting to film, reacting to cinema in such an excited way? Well, I don't, but it's great to, I love film, so it's great to have an eager audience, you know, for anything, and so, and so it's nice to be, it's a great honor to be a part of it. Um, that, this particular film is, Dear, dear to me, and I think Oliver Platt, who was here tonight, was just unbelievable in it. And uh, so I don't know. I love, I love all. Anytime the arts are being supported, and so it's good to be here for that. There was Joanna with her new best friend, Dave Matthews, uh, and you. <laughs> I mean, by the way, a different dress every time, I noticed that. Well, it was a whole week. You exactly. know, we were out there all week. <laughs> exactly. By the way, you cannot do a film festival like this without partners. Uh, WNET, the folks at Montclair State University, um, and, and I will also say, and, and NJTV, our partners on the other side of the river, and John Servideo, the general manager. We got a chance to, ch to catch up with the general manager, John Servideo, at the opening night of the film festival. Let's go to that quick interview with uh, John. I'm Steve Adubato here. It is opening night to the Montclair Film Festival. I'm here with John Savidio, the general manager of NJTV, one of the creators of the film festival. John, 
when you and Bob Feinberg and the others started thinking about this, I remember we were sitting at Egan's Pub and we started talking about right. this. Is this bigger than you imagined? Much bigger. I thought to get to this point would be about five to six years because you know we looked into some other film festivals and it took like three to six years to get it off the ground. Um, and this is absolutely amazing to be in this theater and the number of people here were sold out. I understand they sold a lot of tickets. I don't know if it's true, but I heard about 8,000 tickets, which is great. The whole town is involved. Banners are up. This is up all over the town. I think it's fabulous. Never expected it. John, talk about the connection between the film festival and the new public television station. Not so new anymore. The public television station in New Jersey that you run, NJTV, our operation. Well, NJTV is the sponsor here of the Montclair Film Festival. We tried to help every way we could. We had um, PSAs on the air. For Great Tom, promos. Great promos. Tom Power was on uh, doing interstitials. We're supporting it. We have an NJ Doc series on now to try to help the Montclair Film Festival. So NJTV is very much involved, not in the film festival here, as we are throughout the whole state. You're really proud tonight, aren't you? I am. This is great. Like I said, it doesn't happen without a partnership with NJTV, WNET, the folks at the Montclair Film Festival, Montclair State University. If it were not for uh, Bob Feinberg starting this, which was a video a while back, it would not have happened. Uh, Evie Colbert and the board and everyone else, and Neil uh, Shapiro has been so supportive. And, and Joanne, I gotta want to thank you. You made this very easy. You like doing this. I love doing this. You know, what, what better job to get out there and become friends with Kathleen Turner and Dave Matthews? Rafaela and Tom. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> and I could tell. By the way, go on the Montclair Film Festival website to find out things going on throughout the entire year. A great organization, a great festival, arts and culture, both sides of the river. Steve Adubato from the Tisch, WNET Studios here at Lincoln Center. Great job. Hey, you're good. Don't take mine too soon. Give me a couple more years, okay? A couple more. See you next time. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. It's a lot of fun. So they're taking off. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and the Montclair Film Festival, 13 for WNET, and NJTV. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, Bloomfield College, offering small classes and big opportunities since 1868. Barnabas Health, Wells Fargo, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and banking under the principle of stewardship. And by pse and committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. And The Star Ledger and NJ.com, everything Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.